Good morning, everyone. And it's great that we're all here to come together on this uh, beginning of Holy Week, celebrating Holy Week, and to begin with on this special Sunday, Palm Sunday. And I hope we can all be together as well afterwards in the hall for refreshments, which as usual has been arranged by uh, Anne Christie, and thanks to Anne for doing that. You have the order of service, and so therefore you can see what all the bulletins are. And thanks again to Sheila for preparing yet again the bulletin, the order of service, and putting in all the necessary information. You can see all that for yourselves about uh, the Easter services, and you'll notice it's now being shared by Helvey and Ellen Parish Church. In the past, it was always Ellen and Fovren, but with the new presbytery plan and the new groupings, we are linked now, Bill Helvey is linked with Ellen Parish Church, and so we will be sharing the Easter services this week with Ellen. And you can see that it's an Ellen at seven o'clock on Thursday for the Monday Thursday service, and here at Bill Helvey for the Good Friday service at seven o'clock in Bill Helvey here. Fovren has been welcomed to both services. And you will notice they are also having some afternoon services during Holy Week, and they are on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday this week at 3 o'clock in the Fovren Church Hall. So if you can manage to come along to them, that would be great. And I do hope that we can all come together to worship during Holy Week for all these services. It would be great. To clear up any doubt, about next Sunday's early morning service, because a, in one source it mentions the beach, and another source it mentions Potterton. Well, I can tell you now and confirm that it will be Potterton, just as it was last year, and that's up in the park just behind Denview Crescent. You can easily find that if you come along early, and that's at half past nine. So it's potted in the early morning service next Sunday. And you can see there is something being arranged by the social committee, a, a fashion show, and you can see all the details there. And just one additional thing, next Saturday is the men's breakfast in the cock and bull at half past nine. Men's breakfast. So if you want to come to that, you can let me know, but I will be putting out an email early this next week. Thanks to Patricia, who has come along to, well, to lead us in our worship this morning, and I'll hand you over now to Patricia. Thank you. Good morning. It's nice to be with you again this morning on Palm Sunday. This is my third Palm Sunday I've done, so you've got a spanking new sermon, especially for you today. <laughs> And we're going to begin with some words uh, on the screen for a call to worship, where the bold bits are for you to say and the ordinary bits for me. Humble and riding on a donkey, we greet you. Acclaimed by crowds and caroled by children, we cheer you. Moving from the peace of the countryside to the corridors of power, we salute you, Christ our Lord. You are giving the beast of burden a new dignity. You are giving majesty a new face. You are giving those who long for redemption a new song to sing. With them, with heart and voice, we shout, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Our theme today could have been headed the Servant King. And of course, that's the name of a hymn that we're now going to sing. From heaven you came.
Let's pray our prayers of adoration and confession. Hosanna, Son of David, we greet you as the fulfillment of all our hopes. You alone hold the keys of the kingdom. You alone can show the world how leaders ought to lead, how kings ought to rule, how power ought to be exercised, how politicians ought to serve, how priests ought to minister, how ordinary people can be saints, how donkeys can pull royal coaches. You are worthy of honour and power, yet you come to us in humility and meekness. You deserve worship and glory. Accept our hosannas this day. May they be accompanied by lives of obedience to your way and deeds of service and reconciliation in your name. But Lord, we have to confess this morning as well that although we join with the crowds and we sing your praises and exalt your reign, even so, sometimes our hearts are far from true worship. Our minds are distant from true understanding. We are disappointed with your humility. We're uninspired by your selflessness. Our sin leads us to give you death even though you give us life. Our treachery guides us to war, even though you call us to peace. Help us to reflect in our lives the glory of your Son and to live faithfully here and now. Have mercy on us, Saviour of all. Find us in these forsaken places. Forgive what we have done and who we have been. Bring us home again and impart within us a new song of joy and celebration. And we ask these things in the name of your Son, who taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now our next hymn is Meekness and Majesty. Again, it shows us two sides, the servant and the King Jesus.
That gets your lungs working, that one, doesn't it? Hanging on to those long notes with Alan's, Alan's background. Thank you very much. So we're going to have our two readings from Cynthia now. First of all, John chapter 12, and then a very famous passage from Philippians chapter 2. On your order of service, you'll see there's something supposed to be in between, but technology doesn't allow that today in here. So please take your order of service home, and if you can go on YouTube, put in exactly what it says there, Ride On To Die, Michael Card, and you'll see a, a lovely song with a background of, uh, I think, the, one of the films about, maybe the one Jesus of Nazareth, showing Jesus coming into Jerusalem on the donkey, with really nice and interesting words to match. Thank you very much. The Gospel of John chapter 12, starting at verse 12. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat upon it, as it is written, do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that they had done these things to him. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb had raised him from the dead, continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had given this miraculous sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said one to another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. The next reading is from Philippians chapter 2. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with this spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being in one spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interest, but also the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Jesus Christ, who, being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Thank you, Cynthia. Now we have some new words, but thanks to your wonderful organist, uh, a tune that we know, we sang our glad hosannas.
That hymn gives us a kind of sweep of the Passion story, including a glimpse of Easter Sunday. And today is also known as Passion Sunday, as well as Palm Sunday. So the first hymn we sang said, From heaven you came, helpless babe, entered our world, your glory veiled, not to be served, but to serve, and give your life that we might live. And our second reading, Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, didn't consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. So Paul wrote in his second chapter of his letter to the church in Philippi. And at the end of our gospel reading from John for Palm Sunday, there's this little sentence. At first, the disciples didn't understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that they had done these things to him. Let me tell you two stories as illustrations for today. The first one is about the Duke of Norfolk, and we might have a picture. Yes, we do. This is Arundel Castle, which is one of the greatest, most uh, famous castles in England, and the seat of the Dukes of Norfolk. So the story goes that a Duke in a bygone age happened to be at the railway station when a little Irish girl arrived off the train carrying a heavy bag. She'd come to be a housemaid at Arundel Castle. And the castle was about a mile from the railway station. And the girl was trying to persuade the station porter to carry her cumbersome bag to the castle, for which she offered him a shilling, all the money she had. The porter refused with a sneer. Then the Duke stepped forward, unannounced and shabby in appearance, as was his usual style. Offering to carry the girl's bag to the castle, he took it and walked beside her on the road from the station, all the while talking gently with her about her journey, her home and her new employment. When they reached the castle, he gratefully accepted the shilling she offered him, never allowing her to know who he was. It was only the next day when she met her employer as she was going about her new duties that the housemaid knew it was the Duke of Norfolk himself who'd carried her bag from the station to the castle and that she had tipped him a shilling. A nice story with an interesting message, which I'll come back to. The second story is an old legend about a monastery in France, well known throughout Europe, because of the extraordinary leadership of a man known as Brother Leo. And Brother Leo is supposedly was the favorite disciple of St. Francis of Assisi. And he was the head of this monastery in France. So several monks were on pilgrimage to visit this well-known Brother Leo to learn from him. And almost immediately on the journey, the monks began to bicker as who would do, who should do the various chores that were required on the journey. And on the third day, they met another monk who was also going to the monastery and he joined their party. This monk never complained, never shirked a duty, and whenever the others would fight over who should do what, he would gracefully volunteer and simply do it himself. By the last day, the other monks were following his example, and they worked together smoothly as a team. When they reached the monastery and asked to see Brother Leo, you can guess, the man who greeted them laughed, but our brother is among you. 
and he pointed to the fellow who had joined them late on the trip. So a duke and the head monk of a monastery. What did they have in common? And how could we see Jesus in a similar light? They both held important roles in their sphere, but they didn't abuse them. They're seen in these stories to be servant leaders, ready to serve their people and lead by example, not by command or demand, as one author has put it. They didn't make a great deal out of their position of power, and they treated others below them and didn't treat others below them in an oppressive way. They walked alongside them and helped them on their way. They weren't recognized for who or what they were immediately by those they helped. Maybe this was because of what they did and the way they did it, simply reaching out and down to the needs of those around them in contrast to what people would expect of those in charge of a castle or an empire or even a monastery or a cathedral. In the triumphal entry, as we call it, of Jesus into Jerusalem, he doesn't ride on a war horse ready to fight against the Roman Empire, as some hoped, but on a humble donkey, which one prophet had foretold. But again, did the people realize what this actually meant? They hailed him as king and savior, but little did they know or understand what this would actually entail. And once they did, they were not sure about hailing him as king. The crowd were excited and behind him all the way at this stage, but not so when they began to realize what was going to happen as the week we call Holy Week came to a climax. Our second reading this morning from that famous chapter of Philippians says, he humbled himself and became obedient even death on the cross. So the story moves from the exaltation of Palm Sunday to the humiliation of Good Friday, which Jesus had tried to prepare his disciples for many times as his physical life on earth was nearing its end. But just in the chapter before our gospel reading today, two of Jesus' closest disciples asked to sit at Jesus' side in glory. What was his reply? Whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man didn't come to be served, but to serve, to give his life as a ransom for many. And then in the chapter after the one we've heard today, a few days later, Jesus is at the table and he takes a towel and he washes his disciples' feet as a servant would. And we have to live as servants of that servant king and follow his example. We have to show the love of Jesus just as the Duke of Norfolk did and Brother Leo did. And some words from our first hymn say, so let us learn how to serve and in our lives enthrone him, each other's needs to prefer, for it is Christ we're serving. And Paul begins that chapter two in Philippians with these words to his um, fellow Christians in Philippi and to us to remind us of what we should do and be. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. 
in your relationships with one another have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. As we know, and the disciples would come to realize after the resurrection, this wasn't the end of the story. And as the second half of our Philippians reading reminds us, the humiliation will return to exaltation, not just by those who lived then and there, but those who've turned to him ever since all around the world, who have accepted him as the one who saved them from sin by dying on the cross and rising again to offer them new life. And that's why we can sing, this is our God, the servant king. He calls us now to worship him, to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the servant king. Because it tells us God has exalted him to the highest place and given him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Jesus is our servant King. Now I hope to have a song to play you here again, but instead I'm going to read you it as if it were a poem. And it's called Two Processions. Again, you can find it on YouTube if you like. Two processions entering Jerusalem, two opposing kingdoms on display. Which of these processions are we part of? Which one will we follow on its way? Will we shout, Hail Pilate or Hosanna? when we have a choice whose praise to sing? Will we trust the violent, mighty ruler, or will we trust the peaceful, peasant king? Two processions entering Jerusalem, power of love against the love of power. Will we choose the path of domination, or will we let compassion have its hour? God has had a dream of joyful justice, Rome has spun a nightmare of neglect. If we join the commonwealth of servants, we may bring God's joy and justice yet. Two processions entering Jerusalem, realm of hope, dominion built on fear. As we choose the path that love has opened, we will see the realm of hope draw near. And now we'll have our offering um, gathered and we'll sing our hymn, Take or Take Me As I Am.
Blessed are you, Lord God, from the first of time to the last. Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty, for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the sovereignty, and you are exalted over all as head. Wealth and honor come from you. You rule over all. Of your own we now give you, for the good of your church and the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you entered Jerusalem in quiet humility, taking the form of a servant, even to the point of death on a cross, emptying yourself so that we might be filled. Come again now and establish your kingdom. Come afresh to our troubled world with all its needs, its tensions, its problems, and its evil. Come again and now establish your kingdom. Bring healing where there is division, love where there is hatred, hope where there is despair, joy where there is sorrow, confidence where there is fear, strength where there is weakness healing where there is sickness, life where there is death. Come again now and establish your kingdom. Father, as the crowds welcomed your son and sang your praises, we pray that many more will welcome you into their hearts and lives over this Easter season. We pray for opportunities to spread your good news in Holy Week and give us courage to do this. You are our King and we welcome you. Father, we recall the donkey Jesus rode on and we pray for that real humility in our hearts which treats status and image casually and truth and loving service seriously. Father, the children sang and shouted your praise and we pray for the children round the world we pray for the children we know today who are unwell, for the parents who are struggling with their teenage children, with children who have lost their direction. And I pray especially for my friend Biff and her little grandchild, very small baby, having an operation this week. May you not fail them in the support and the support that they need. Father, the crowds were responding to the healing love they'd seen in action in Jesus. And we bring to you in our love and imaginations now all those we would have brought to Jesus for healing and help. And we remember them now in our hearts. Give them comfort and reassurance, wholeness and hope. Father, lastly, Jesus knew he was riding to his death. We pray for all on that last journey, especially those burdened with fear and guilt. And we commend to your eternal love all who have died, thanking you for the blessings we have received and even for the grief which is part of the love we share. Father, we too spread our coats on the road as we express our thankfulness for all you have done for us and the amazing extent of your love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now our final hymn is Old Hail the Power of Jesus' Name.
Lord Jesus Christ, reach out to your church and world. Despite the weakness of our faith and the rejection of so many, may your will be done on earth, even as it is in heaven. And the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and all those whom we love, now and forever.